Hey, welcome back. What we are wanting to do real quick is just review. First of all, we talked about when you're trying to identify a mineral, color is probably the least important to look at, even though it can help. Then what you ought to do is do it a, give it a luster test. Does it shine like gold, copper, silver, iron? If it does not shine like a metal, it is called a non-metallic mineral. If it shines like a metal, then it's called a metallic mineral. And remember, iron is the one that's a little bit more difficult to tell. Just looking at your paper, several of you got some black ones mixed up and shiny ones mixed up. Shiny does not mean metallic mineral. Okay, it's got to look like gold, copper, silver, and iron. Iron is a little bit different because it's a little bit darker and can look a little bit black, so it's a little bit more difficult to tell whether it's a metallic. But when in doubt, pick non-metallic. So what we want to cover today is the streak test. What you can see over in the pictures, right up in this area, is that certain minerals, like this gold piece down here, this uh, pyrite piece, it looks like it should streak gold. Okay, when you scratch it on a streak plate, that's what this square thing's called, it actually is a black or gray streak. Real gold will actually streak yellow. So it's a pretty good indicator with the streak plate that you are actually having a piece of pyrite instead of a piece of gold simply by streaking it. Some minerals will actually streak the exact same color that they are. Therefore, the streak test for that mineral is probably not the most useful. But there are many minerals that may look black, and when you streak it on a black streak plate, it actually comes out white. And so you're like, what? So that's what you're doing with the streak plate. Um... Now, one of the things that you have to know, though, is it only works for minerals that are softer than a streak plate. If you're using a diamond to streak and find out the color, well, the diamond cuts into porcelain, and therefore it doesn't leave a streak. It leaves a scratch instead. Um, be aware of that. Things like quartz may not streak. So when you are using a streak plate and you're trying to identify a mineral and it does not streak, then you just put no streak simply because um, it scratched it. And don't put down the scratch as a streak. It's got to actually leave a powdered residue. Okay, It's going to leave part of the material on the streak plate. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to get two streak plates in our demonstration today. One will be black, one will be white. And in those streak plates, you're going to streak the minerals on both of them because some will streak better and clear on white. Some will streak better clear on black. Okay, so a real quick demonstration on streaking. I know you guys have always wanted to learn the proper way of streaking. So let me just show you how that's done. Just take a mineral. Okay, and again, if it's softer than the plate, it'll streak. So you can just streak it across. Please do not, we're not coloring on my streak plates. Okay, that's a no-no. All you do is find a clean surface and streak it. If, it's, if you're out of space, then um, go wash it or use a cloth. But you can see that that gold piece streaked black, okay? You might have a piece like this, or when you scratch it, it doesn't leave anything on this one, so you go to the other plate, okay, and streak it, and you can see that this black mineral streaked white, okay? So that's what you're doing on your streak test. It's really that simple. The other thing we want to talk about is cleavage. Okay, cleavage is where minerals break along smooth, flat planes. I'll show you some pictures in a moment about cleavage. The reason it breaks into smooth planes is because of how the atoms are arranged. You can see, like in this area, okay, if you're um, muscovite, okay, it gets layered on top, so the atoms actually form in a very flat area, flat region, whereas feldspar 
can actually break off like a stair step and you can see that each stair step step will look similar to the previous stair step um, halite which is um, salt again if you remember from our experiment you saw that the salt crystals formed a bunch of cubes and they just kind of sat on top of each other if you took a piece of halite and threw it on the ground it would shatter along these planes. Sure it would break off edges and so it's not always going to be smooth but you can see from this bottom picture that broke off fairly smooth. Test is the cleavage test. Couple things you're looking for cleavage. See that shine? That tells you this mineral has excellent cleavage. It's not shining simply because the light is bright. It is actually picking up the light and it's reflecting it back to the camera. If it does not have that shine, there's another good one, if it does not have that shine like this one, hey see that? There's no shine when I move it around. So this does not have cleavage at all. Okay, so this would be like zero cleavage and this would have excellent cleavage. Okay. Now, the temptation is to say that here's another mineral that has really good cleavage because it reflects a lot of light back. But you might have a rock like this, okay, that you could reflect some light back, but it's not near as reflecting as the flat mineral that we had, the mica, it, but it is reflecting light. So this is said to have cleavage, it just may not be excellent cleavage. So again, this one right here, here's one. Look at that nice shine to it. This probably has excellent cleavage. You don't want to find areas that have been eroded and weathered Okay, like that. You actually want to find the mineral at its finest. Um, so you can see that it shines back a lot of light. Now let me show you. Here's a piece of quartz. Okay, It's actually a shiny crystal. And it might reflect light, but it does not bounce right back into your eyes very well. Okay. Even though it's light and a little bit shiny, that does not mean it's got excellent cleavage. That's the crystals reflecting back. What you're wanting is you're wanting, again, this shine. That, I mean, it just, boom, hits you right in the eyes as you see that. So that's the cleavage test which you're going to be working on. Okay, so what you're going to do today is you're going to pull out a blank line piece of paper. Make sure you put your name on it. You're going to create your own table. It's going to have three columns and nine rows on it. Remember, columns are up and down and rows are right and left. In row one, you're going to label the columns with these labels. Column one will be labeled mineral number. Column two will be labeled street colors. And column three will be labeled, labeled cleavage. You're going to receive a box of eight minerals. You already used the minerals number in the mineral number column. So for example, if you have mineral 75, that's what you're going to put there. Don't just number it 1 through 6, please. In the streak column, you're going to write down what the color streak is. Now be very specific because there is a difference between a bluish green and a bright green, or just plain green. You might have an off-white or a very bright white. These actually do make a difference when you are trying to identify a mineral. And then in the third column, in the cleavage column, you're going to write down whether, cleavage, whether the mineral has excellent cleavage, good cleavage, bad cleavage, which means you could tell that light's reflected, it's just not very good, and no cleavage at all, which means when you hold it up to the light, you just don't get any reflection back to your eyes. You're going to finish this. Um, please do not damage my minerals. I will be back tomorrow. My sick leave vacation is over. Um, and we will review everything we've done. 
and we're getting ready to take the test on being able to identify minerals and you're going to all have to identify six minerals yourself okay so um, make sure that you learn how to do this and we'll see you tomorrow have a good day